Hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Von Trout Inspires. So today's episode is going to be about a story time. Um, there was a time in my life where I did have an individual that told me that God told me that I'm supposed to be his wife. I should have been um, flabbergasted. I should have been impressed by this, but unfortunately I was actually confused. And if you're interested in why, please stay tuned. Okay, so that was a time in my life at the age of 22, which is about exactly t 10 years ago from today. At that age, I was young, wasn't interested in dating at that time. I was, you know, doing my own thing and was actually um, in college at that time. Um, that was a time that I lived with my uncle and my aunt and living with them at that time. I had a cousin and he had a few friends that would come around the house um, quite often. And at this time, there was a friend that was interested in me, but I guess I didn't know he was interested. He would watch me from afar. I had recently broken up with um, my ex at that time. Uh, we, you know, had been dating on and off for a few years. So it felt good to be free, single and whatnot. So um, just fast forward. I was getting ready to move out of town, move to another city and transfer um, colleges. And at that time, um, this individual that, you know, was my cousin's friend, he helped me, you know, to pack the car and all that kind of stuff or whatever. So it was like, you know, it was interesting, but I just thought he was being nice. So um, I, when I relocated down south, at this time, um, this, this guy, he showed more interest in me than he did when I lived in town. And I believe it was primarily because of my uncle. <laughs> my uncle was pretty, you know, direct and straightforward and pretty strict. So I don't think he wanted to cross boundaries with him. So moving along, a couple of weeks after I moved there, he would reach out to me. This one my space was in, you guys. Like, this was right before I even got into Facebook really good, but he sent me a message like on MySpace and he told me he wanted me to be his girlfriend. I was a little impressed at this time. I was like, okay, you know, he had started coming to visit me, you know, and, um, we would hang out and just, you know, trying to get to know each other. So, um, not long after that, um, the Lord began to deal with me. I would say maybe three weeks into the relationship, I felt a nudge from the Lord saying like to break up with him. And that was actually something that I was like, you know, taken aback from because I'm like, I'm just getting to know this guy and yada, yada. So, but I had to be obedient. In my obedience, I wasn't that bold to call him or try to meet him in person to let him know. I just sent him a simple text message. My only mistake in that message was stating exactly how it came to me that God said for me to break up with him. And that's exactly what I, how I addressed it in the text message. And, um, like he wasn't really receptive of it, but he respected the decision. I do believe there was some unfinished, you know, conversations we, you know, we should have had, but we moved on fast forward about nine months later. Um, I get an inbox. Now I'm pretty active on Facebook, but I get an inbox on Facebook from his brother's girlfriend at that time. And I had never heard from her. I knew of her, but I had never got a message or anything like that from her. So when she messaged me, I knew it had something to do with him. I had that awareness that it had something to do with him. She reached out to me and said that he wanted to talk to me, and but he wasn't able to call me directly. So, of course, I'm thinking, like, why is he not able to call me himself? But anyway, so she got my permission, got my number, and three-way, you know, us on a phone call. And one thing led to another, and he just began to share with me what he felt, how he felt about me, what he thought of me, and what he believed the Lord shared with him. He had began to share with me how he had giving his life to the Lord and like kind of sharing that testimony with me. And of course I'm excited, you know, I'm like, that's great. You know, you've given your life to God and I'm sort of rejoicing with him. And then shortly after that, that's when things began to sound pretty interesting. 
he began to tell me that um, God promised him two things while he was in jail after he had surrendered his life to Christ. One was that I would be his wife and that God will bless him to be able to go join the military. I'm not going to lie to you. I was so confused. I was so frustrated because I wasn't interested in this guy. I mean, even after a couple weeks of dating him, I'm like, okay, I'm just getting to know him. I wasn't like head over here for him or wasn't feeling him like that. So at this moment, I'm like, no, heck no. You in jail too? Not to be judgmental of anyone, but I'm like, no, this this not this not the life that I want for myself. And so um, I was like, God, there's some discussions that we haven't had. You know, I'm like, God hasn't, he hasn't dealt with me. He hasn't spoken to me since like nine months prior when he told me to break things off. And I also knew that God is not schizophrenic or bipolar. He's not going to say one thing and then change his mind. Like God is sovereign, you know? And so I just was like, no, this there's some confusion apparently. But see, the when he spoke those things, he released something as well. And that was um, the enemy just constantly going back and forth with me, toiling with me about the decision I made and if I had made a mistake and did I really hear God the right way and like maybe I haven't been hearing God's voice and all of these things, whatever, he may hear from God more than I do. And I mean, it was a bunch of confusion and a bunch of mess. I did something that I encourage people to this day to never do. One of the things that I did instead of just discontinuing like communicating with him, I continued to communicate with him um, even after he had gotten out of jail. I was still communicating with him. Um, I was still trying to be his friend because I kind of felt bad for him in a way. Like I felt like, you know, here's this guy who really felt like he heard from God and apparently he likes me more than I like him. And so I felt bad for him. And that's one thing I would say, do not feel bad for people. It's better to be honest with a person and cut them off than to lead them on. And apparently that's what I was doing. I was leading him on, though I was saying with my words that I don't like you like that and all that kind of stuff. My actions showed different. I still communicated with him. We would do like virtual Bible studies, like over, you know, video and stuff like that. And there was a time when he came to a family function. Um, we were talking for a few months or whatever. I'm not liking him. We're not in a relationship, but all along he's painting this image, this lifestyle and his heart and his mind about us or whatever. Just, I don't know, you know, but anyway, he came to a family event where, um, he proposed guys, he proposed. And I'm like, where is this coming from? I showed no interest that I liked him like that. None whatsoever. We hadn't even gone out on dates or anything like that. Everything is at this point is just over the phone and completely virtual. And um, we just set it up where it was like we were friends and whatnot. But like I say, he just, I don't know. I was so confused. And also, guys, there was another factor in this situation that kind of like um, got intertwined with my decision and making um, to marry this guy. I was waiting until marriage for intimacy. And so that was something that he also respected. Um, that was a big thing because I, you know, learned that if a guy is willing to wait with you, he's not going to pressure you for marriage, then he's the one. But I have to encourage you, that is not the only factor. Uh, I don't care if you're a young, old, that can't be the only thing. We have to look at other traits too, because even though he may be respecting my decision um, to wait, he might have been elsewhere doing whatever with whomever. But at the same time, it, it, we have to look at the spirit and the character and the fruit of an ind individual. So I would just say that was something that played in the role of me believing too that maybe I heard wrong or whatever because there were some good qualities in what he offered me that I wanted in a husband. You know, like I'm like he's he's respectfully waiting with me. He's not pressuring me. Not one time did he ever come on to me. We even waited to kiss until we got married. That is so interesting that he was willing to um, produce self control throughout this process for an extended period of time, only for me to find out that this is not the right person. Like he literally did a complete um, 180. 
you know, when we got married, the marriage was full of perversion and, you know, lust and control and manipulation. It just, I mean, it transpired into something else. Um, so I would just say, look into that. That is not the only factor. That's a great factor, but that can't be the only one. Okay, so at this time, it was almost like we just kind of like fast forward into a relationship. I was so gullible at this time, um, at this point in my life. Um, I didn't really have a backbone like I should have had. So we are in this relationship and, um, well, actually right before the relationship, I did go back to an ex, but then I didn't know the reason why that relationship didn't work out was because this individual was praying against our union. I actually liked this individual that I went back to. However, it didn't work out because this counterfeit guy was the one praying against our union. He was aware of it. He knew about it. So he was praying against it. I found out years later about that, but just going back to that point in my life, we get into a relationship. He was almost like a rebound situation. I guess he say I'm the one that's praying against it because I want her. And so he was there consoling me and all of this stuff, whatever, trying to be a deep friend and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of gained somewhat of, um, feelings towards him. Cause I felt like, okay, this guy care about me, yada, yada. So maybe I made a mistake. I don't know. But anyway, we began to see each other. Um, he would come visit me and I ended up getting a job offer in the city that he lived in. And so I moved there and we started seeing each other more, but now I'm further away from my family, people that can actually help me <laughs> in a situation like this. Um, fast forward through that situation. I got my apartment there, um, here. And I'm going to let you guys know too, there was a time I moved in with his mom when I first moved to the town that he lived in. He lived with his dad and I moved in with his mom. And that's a whole nother situation. If you guys want to know how that went down, please let me know in the comments. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. But anyway, I moved out of her place maybe a few weeks or a month after living with her into my own place. And he would come and visit me. And, and the times that he visited me, I didn't have any furniture. So um i i didn't have friends and family here like that so he was like the only person that would come and see about me and spend time with me this was not healthy it wasn't healthy at all because here i'm hearing from a guy that says god told me i'm supposed to be his wife and i'm like that's not god and then i'm in the same vicinity as he he is and he's in my home and it was crazy you guys it and this particular day he had come over to the apartment and there was a time I was standing up like near the hallway area and he came over near where I was and he said he wanted to pray with me. I thought that was innocent. So I, I opened, you know, the door to prayer. So he anointed my forehead, he anointed my feet. And, and at first I'm thinking like, this kind of like extra, <laughs> you know, like well, we can just gather hands and pray. But anyway, so I kind of trusted his leading. I felt like, you know, maybe I'm just blowing it out of proportion. But he began to speak in an unknown tongue and whispers. And that was very weird to me because I'm like, why we can't pray in English out loud, at least to start with. But anyway, uh, at this time, I had not spoken in tongues or anything like that. So I was just like, okay. So we are praying, and, or at least he's praying. But like I said, something didn't feel right you know, it just felt strange or whatever. And I asked him, I said, why are you not praying out loud where I can hear you and understand what you're saying? Like, you know, but he never answered the question. And then, um, shortly after that, like the prayer was closed. It was a short, brief prayer, whatever he prayed, it was closed, but I didn't feel right about it at all. Um, and he reproposed, like he reproposed to me in that apartment and at that time, I went ahead and accepted the ring. By this time, this was like the third time he had proposed. Because there was a time when I lived with his mom, he had proposed then. However, he ended up with the ring back. And then when I'm in my apartment now, he proposed again. This time, I went ahead and accepted the ring. Um, I felt so much peer pressure. I felt so much, you know, like whatever the case may be, like, I, I felt like I was losing my self will, my willpower, what I wanted. And, um, and I, you know, got intertwined and in whatever it is that, you know, he wanted at this point. And so there was a time, 
I let you guys know, b b just being very transparent in this story time, like we were dancing. He said, let's practice our, you know, dance or when we get married. Um, I was like, okay, I thought it was fun and romantic and cute and all that. So we're in a dining room area. Mind you, I have no furniture, so we have open space. But I had a case of water uh, up along the wall. And as we begin to dance and he began to turn me around and bend me and all that kind of stuff, whatever, I passed out. I passed completely out, but I didn't know I passed out until I came back. I don't know how long this had taken place. I don't know. But he was right there in front of me, looking in my face with mouth wide open and eyes wide open, like, wow, I don't know what happened to you. But by this time, I don't feel right in my spirit. I felt a check in my spirit, just something is not right. I felt a suspense of evil. Something's that's not right. It's just strange and it feels very uncomfortable. If I feel an evil presence, and it was very, like, um, very, very obvious that something wasn't right. Not only did I fall down and pass out, my head hit the case of water that was along the wall. So my head was pounding. And I'm like, what happened? And he said he didn't know. But I knew he knew what happened. I just knew it in my spirit. But he never confessed what actually happened, what actually transpired. So I knew he was up to something that just wasn't right and he just wasn't being honest with me. But by this time, whatever was happening, whatever he was working up, stirring, you know, in the pot, you know, it was working. Because when my mom came in town, when my brother came in town and, you know, family was coming, I was already kind of like far gone. They wanted to like, you know, help me in the situation but it was kind of too late what he had done at this point uh assisted me in getting to his town to isolate me away from you know what i'm familiar with so that he can do whatever it was to get me to the place he wanted me to be in so at this point i don't know what's going on I'm not even in the right mindset anymore. My thought process is different. I feel indifferent. I'm very defensive of him. When my mom and my brother would say something about him, I covered him. It was very weird. It was very strange. I, I, I wasn't myself, but at this time, I was pretty much like blind to everything at this point. I was blind to what was really going on. Um, one thing led to another. So you guys, I had so many signs as to why I should have cut it off. But like I said, I kept the door open. Um, he came to the family function when he proposed. I realized I had to take a step back and I said, there are some things that I need to do differently. Um, he was so nervous. He was shaking. I was shaking because I knew what was about to take place. And I wasn't ready for that. I didn't say yes, and I did not say no. I was like, maybe I need to have a conversation with God. And it's nothing wrong with communicating with God, but at this point, it shouldn't take for me to hear from God to know whether or not I want to marry this guy. I knew I did not want to marry him. I knew I wasn't attracted to him. I knew I didn't have a future with him. I knew it wasn't nothing there. It was nothing there whatsoever. So that was where the confusion came in. And that, so I tried to like kind of take a step back, but then that was again me feeling sorry for him and he him feeling rejected, you know, and all that because there was quite a few people at this family function, so they were all aware of what was going on. And so, um, another thing that happened after that, like I said, I kept in communication with him. I should have just stopped communicating altogether blocked his number but i did not do that and another thing i encourage people to do when it comes to you know anything whether it's relationships or whatnot is to make sure that you stay before god and read your word and have sound you know a sound voice in your ear like a pastor or someone that can speak into your life that can pray with you and you know, encourage you in the things of the Lord because I did not have that. I will be completely honest with you. I was not in my work like I should have been. I didn't have a prayer life like I should have had. And I, sh I was not under a spiritual cover. And that's, at this time, I was not really going to church like I should have been. And I was a believer, but 
backslidden, you know, living for God on my own terms. But in this particular situation, I really needed to be doing all the right things because I won't make a, a crazy mistake as far as marrying someone that I knew was not sent by God. But I thank God that I'm no longer bound in that situation. So my encouragement to you today is to trust God. If you are waiting for marriage and God have you wait, that's a good thing. There are so many people that's in jacked up situations and jacked up marriages that do not want to be in it. They are crying and pleading with God to release them out of these marriages. So do not be desperate for marriage. Do not be desperate. Enjoy your singlehood. Ask God to give you contentment. Be content in your, your lonely season. Get around friends and family. Socialize. Like I say, ask God to heal some things in you that make you feel lonely and empty and void. Because a marriage, a relationship with, you know, uh, the opposite sex, sex is not going to fix it. it it's not going to fix it. You can be in a marriage like I was and still feel lonely, still feel void of love and affection because I didn't get any of that. I didn't get love nor affection from this individual because there was never any from the beginning. So I did not get that. So wait on God. God will get, send you a spouse that will love you like he loves you, will nurture you and, you know, comfort you, support you and lead you in the right direction. Because it's also this guy, just as he led me astray saying that God said, and it wasn't really God, he also was a part of another faith that I was unaware of. I thought he was a Christian, but this guy was not. And so he was trying to sow his doctrine into me, you know, that this and that. I mean, it was a bunch of stuff. But like I said, I had to stand for him to come back and say, God said the opposite. I should have took heed at that point and kept going. I should have said, no, this is not right. I should have, you know, sought the word of the Lord, got in my word. Like I said, there was many things that I should have done. But I ended up marrying this guy. My marriage was horrible. It was crappy. It was, when I tell you, I was miserable every day of my life. I had no joy, no peace. I had, and he wasn't the husband that he should have been. Like, you know, not to put anyone down, but he wouldn't work. He would lie and say, God say it. It, you know, he shouldn't work. He should focus on ministry. Like he neglected his household. He neglected his, me as his wife. Shortly after that, I got pregnant, you know, with our first son and he wasn't the, the best father that he could have been to him. So I'm just saying like, it was very toxic. I literally went through all types of abuse with this individual. I mean, there were so many signs prior to this marriage and I just went right along you know, with the, you know, situation, I, I should have never, I dealt with a lot of things in my life from childhood. I, I dealt with abandonment, rejection. I dealt with loneliness. I, I dealt with feeling unloved and all of these things played a major role. So there was things on the inside of me, I believe attached, you know, itself to the things that, you know, he, you know, as to why he was in my life, you know, there was wounds were still there they were not healed oh. in situations like this it's like i said it's best to have um the right people in your life and also to be humble enough to receive wise counsel there were trusted voices in my ears as far as family members however we have to also be in a posture to receive and be humble enough to say like we don't know you know, what's best for us at times. So I was 22 years old and I married him. It actually took a few years before the marriage actually took place. So we married in 2013 and I met him in 2009 when I was 22. So fast forward about three or four years in, um, I ended up marrying him and I, no longer regret this decision that I made because I can't go back and make any changes with my past. But I just pray that this situation helps someone um, to make the best decision and in this season and the next season of your life. If you are dating someone that you're not interested in, you're not attracted to, 
and don't date out of desperation don't date out of loneliness if you're dealing with hurt abandonment rejection feeling unloved allow god to heal you ask god to heal and target those areas in prayer i did not know how important that was i really did not but after that, I did. I made sure that I see, sought God because I'm like, God, I do not want to make the same mistake again. I can't afford it. I can't afford to. So I did not want to get married for a long time. I just wanted to focus on my life, get my life back on track. I lost so many things being with this individual. I literally went through a roller coaster. I almost, you know, lost it all. I almost lost my mind, checked myself into you know, crazy house, you know, no offense to anyone who has had to do that. But literally, like I literally was losing my mind. And I just thank God. I thank God. I thank God that he came in and rescued me and took me out of that situation. I was so desperate. I'm like, Father, I did not follow you every step of the way. But Lord, I'm gonna need you to come through for me now. And I see why, why I see why now. You said no. Why you told me to walk away? A lot of times, God is not going to tell us why for both male and female that's listening. Um, when you are in a process of waiting for marriage and preparing for marriage, these are things that will come up prior to you reading, meeting the right mate. There will be counterfeits. There will be false prophets, false teachers, liars and diviners, all of this stuff. But at this time, I was unaware of these type of things. I was not aware that this kind of stuff take, takes place. So that's why I'm sharing my story with you because I'm hoping to help somebody not make a mistake with their life. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible that I would like to share with you that will help you in this time of your life. If you are not married and single, please, please, please take heed to what I'm sharing with you because all of that stuff could have been avoided. I'm coming from um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. If I would have read that scripture, I would have been wondering if this is a situation that I'm in. If, because in the beginning, from the beginning, I knew what God told me. I knew that God told me to break things off with this guy. And then for him to come back and say God said the opposite, I should have took heed at that point and kept going. I should have said, no, this is not right. I should have, you know, sought the word of the Lord, got in my word. Like I said, there was many things that I should have done. But I ended up marrying this guy. My marriage was horrible. It was crappy. It was when I tell you, I was miserable every day of my life. I had no joy, no peace. I had, and he wasn't the husband that he should have been. Like, you know, not to put anyone down, but he wouldn't work. He would lie and say, God said, it, it, you know, he shouldn't work. He should focus on ministry. Like he neglected his household. He neglected his me as his wife. Shortly after that, I got pregnant, you know, with our first son. And he wasn't the the best father that he could have been to him. So I'm just saying, like, it was very toxic. I literally went through all types of abuse with this individual. I mean, there were so many signs prior to this marriage. And I just went right along, you know, with the, you know, situation. I, I should have never. I dealt with a lot of things in my life from childhood. I, I dealt with abandonment, rejection. All these things I needed to receive healing from, which I did later on. I pray and hope this video encouraged you in your waiting season, your dating process. Eliminate the ones that are not for you. Do not linger in relationships that you know are not right for you, that you're not interested in. You see signs of this and that. If Look, I'm not saying that people don't have flaws and that, you know, you shouldn't give people a chance, but at the same time, there are some things that should be deal breakers, things that you should not, you know, be okay with. Don't settle. My biggest thing I tell people, and I have a dating group that's for women, and it's called Dating with Discernment. 
a wife preparation because while you're in the preparation of becoming a wife you do need to date with discernment not only to weed out what's wrong but you need to also date with discernment to know who's the right person for you as well you need to be able to see the fruit in their life so my thing is that i always say to do not settle don't you know stay in a situation longer than you need to be in because it just it gives the enemy too much room to like cause deception and to plant seeds um, that later on you got to struggle getting delivered and uprooted out of your life. So like I said, I pray this in video, my story time, my testimony, it has encouraged you. If you want to know like more information about like, you know, what I shared today, leave it in the comment section below. I also have my email address in the description of this video. So if you want to send me a private message for prayer or questions or concerns that you may have, please feel free to do so. Okay, so I'm also going to be sharing with you guys part two to this story time. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you what all I went through in that marriage. It was a lot, you guys, but I am willing to share that with you. So if you are interested and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you will be notified when my next video uploads. I thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Feel free to share this video with someone that you know it will help encourage in this season of singleness and waiting to be married. And if you know someone that may be dating, someone that is no not good for them and they want to marry them, share this video with them. This may be the very thing that'll help them move forward. It may be the very thing that'll help open their eyes to see that marriage is not something you just go into with anybody. You wanna make sure that you're marrying the right person. I can gladly say to you guys, today I am remarried. I am happily married to my wonderful husband, God sent me a great man. I really waited this time for the right man. I went through all of the process of what it takes to wait for the right person. I prayed, I fasted, I stayed in my word. I have amazing leaders. I have amazing leaders and my family, I've been clear-minded. I've been healed and delivered from so many things that I, I've allowed wise counsel to assist me in this season of my life. So, and I also have a dating page. It's called Dating with Discernment, Wife Preparation for Women that are in the pro process that I was recently in. So if you're interested, go ahead and go to the description of this video and go ahead and join us. We would love to have you. And also look forward to upcoming videos um, on, the, you know, dating and waiting for marriage and courtship and all of that good stuff. So if y'all are interested, stay tuned. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Y'all are already family. <laughs> so thank you so much for stopping by. And I hope and pray that you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.